Good evening again. We want to start with an update on that traffic crash that we first told you about at 530. We have some new information now. Highway 15 in Perry County is back open now following a two vehicle crash near the Glomar Bridge that's south of Hazard. We do know two people were injured. We do not know their conditions at this time. In just a little bit, we hope to hear from investigators at the scene with more information. Well, tomorrow is a big day in Southern Kentucky. Governor Matt Bevan and Vice President Mike Pence will make several stops along the I-75 corridor. One place they will visit is Corbin. WYMT's Will Puckett caught up with the owner of the restaurant they'll be stopping at, who calls it an honor. This is about more than just Shep's place. It's a big deal for the city of Corbin. I mean, this, I don't know the last time the vice president comes to the city of Corbin. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, it's, it's a big deal for all of us. But Mark Shepard, the owner of Shep's place, would be lying if he said he was not humbled. They picked his place. It's an awesome experience, for, especially for a business owner like me. Shepard is a Desert Storm veteran and knows that when the vice president asks to come, you do not say no. It's an honor that uh, they would pick chefs to come here and, uh, and have lunch, and uh, it's, a, it's a high honor. This is an experience of a lifetime for Shepard and all of his employees. You know, only you get to see in the movies, but it's, it's been great. Working with the governor's office, as well as the Secret Service, this has been a weeks long process. About a week ago, we was told that, you know, maybe the vice president shows up and that was very exciting. Now, as we sit less than 24 hours from the occasion, Shepard knows he has a long night ahead. You know, it's supposed to be fun. I mean, at the end of the day, we all need to have fun with this and be honored that they chose this city of Corbin to come to. But come noontime Friday, it will all be worth it. In Corbin, Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. Shepard says he's double checking to make sure their food does not disappoint, but he says that's a small worry because it's always good. You can watch the vice president land at the Corbin London Airport tomorrow around noon on our website and Facebook page. We will also have live coverage of the vice president's speech tomorrow afternoon in London. That's expected sometime in the three o'clock hour. Meanwhile, you can expect delays tomorrow along roads on the I-75 corridor. Some roads will likely be blocked off for brief amounts of time as the vice president's motorcade travels to each location. We are told that lanes on the interstate could be closed in one direction as the vice president moves from spot to spot. He's also going down to Williamsburg for a time. Now, these closings should not last longer than five to ten minutes. Now also expect a high number of local and federal police scattered up and down Interstate 75. Well, Election Day is under a week away. About one in three registered voters turned out for the 2015 gubernatorial election. Hillary Thornton has more on what officials expect turnout to look like this time around. Back in 2015, for the state's last governor's election, there was about 30% voter turnout. The Secretary of State is predicting a similar turnout for Tuesday. Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes is predicting a 31% voter turnout statewide. That projection is based on absentee voting so far. This year's candidates, the Republican incumbent Matt Bevin and Democrat Attorney General Andy Bashir, in the midst of making their final pushes with the rest of their party's ticket. Today, Governor Bevin had a couple of events with Dr. Ben Carson, while Attorney General Bashir continued on his bus tour. Are we ready? This is about values. It's about voting your values and not your party. And what is in the best interest of yourself? What would you fight for? I see people hungry for a governor that works for all Kentuckians and not just his rich buddies. Now the clerk here in Fayette County says voter turnout is difficult to predict and that there are many factors this year that could shift that up or down. He says the potential factors he sees are if youth voters will actually turn out if Kentucky's education community's anger with the current governor will translate at the polls, and that many voters seem to be worn out with the bitterness seen in politics at all levels. Don Blevins says the weather also can have an impact. He says typically with rain, they do see a lower turnout. And that predicted 31% would amount to about 1 million Kentuckians casting their vote on Tuesday. For now in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. 
Weather, by the way, not expected to be an issue by Election Day. Paige will have more on that in a moment. Now, polls will open around 6 a.m. and close at 6 p.m. on Election Day. To find out where your po local polling place is, you can check the State Board of Elections website at elect.ky.gov. Yeah, after today, we're looking like we're going to get a much needed break from the rain after the past two days, but starting to clear out a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and take you on top of Buffalo Mountain. You can see a little bit of the sun peeking through clouds trying to break up after those soggy past two days. And it was very soggy earlier today. You see that here satellite and radar showing those soggier conditions a little bit earlier today, but clearing out pretty nicely now and those temperatures dropping officially hitting the 30s in Jackson and Hazard even down in to Harlan, 37 in London, 36 over into Richmond. Still those 40s, Prestonsburg, Pikeville down into Wise and even into Middlesboro as well. As that cold front continues to push through and compared to this time yesterday, we're about 25, almost 30 degrees cooler. If you remember, we were actually in the 70s earlier this morning. Temperatures have been dropping and fun fact, October 1st, we hit a high of 97, way above average and overnight tonight expected to drop near 20 27 degrees way below average so two extremes for the beginning of October towards the end of October and we'll talk a little bit more about tonight's forecast and your weekend forecast coming up in just a little bit. Yeah that dry hot <laughs> weather at the beginning of the month seems like a lifetime ago. Paige thank you. Kentucky State Police are looking for a man who attacked and shot at a local car dealership owner in Knott County. WIMT's Lauren McCourt talked with the man who says he is grateful to be alive. A nightmare taking place in broad daylight. I was washing a car off with a spray washer and didn't know he was even approaching. As James Combs was in the middle of the workday, the unthinkable happened. I don't want to see hit me in the face with a pistol. The blow sent Combs to the ground, but he fought back. But I couldn't tell anything about him, and I asked him, I said, who are you? Combs was able to push the man away, but couldn't identify the attacker because he was wearing a ski mask. Anyway, he jerks loose and... Uh, fires the gun. I don't know if he was firing at me or what happened. I know the gun went off. Following the attack, the man jumped back into his car and sped off. Oh, he's still out there and whoever did it, evidently I know him or they wouldn't have been covering their face up. Now, Combs is fearing for his life because he knows the attacker is still out there. You know, you're always uh, cautious now. You're watching every car moves and everybody coming on the lot you're watching. Leaving the fight with only a few injuries. My arm is... Uh, I cut real bad in my head and my eye. Combs is grateful to still be alive. In Knott County, Lauren McCourt, WYMT Mountain News. If you have any information on this attempted robbery, you should call Kentucky State Police. The Laurel County Sheriff's Department is looking into a double stabbing. It happened off SNA Lane in London last night. They said two men were fighting when they stabbed each other, causing serious injuries. Both were taken to St. Joseph Hospital London with multiple stab wounds. Their identities have not been released yet. Deputies expect to make arrests. Meanwhile, a Laurel County man is behind bars charged with first-degree robbery. State police arrested 19-year-old Christian Schrader yesterday. Earlier this month, troopers say he robbed someone at gunpoint and took $400. His warrant does not specify the name of the victim. Schrader's bond is set at $50,000 cash. Right now, University of Kentucky police are investigating a report of a rape on campus. It is the fifth one reported this semester. One way victims can seek help is the Violence Intervention and Prevention Center, or VIP. It supports victims of any interpersonal violence, whether it's sexual assault, domestic violence, harassment, or stalking. If anyone feels like they've experienced interpersonal violence, then they can come in, sit down with one of our advocates, chat with them. Um, folks can share as much or as little as they feel comfortable sharing about their experience. Police say the alleged incident happened shortly after midnight on September 27th. Agents with the Federal Bureau of Investigations arrested a Pike County man this morning. This is Jimmy Lee Moore. A federal grand jury indicted him on drug charges from September 2016 through May of 2017. He is accused of distributing pills, including oxycodone and hydrocodone. If convicted, Lee faces up to 30 years in prison and a hefty fine. 
Today, we learned a trial date is set for two people accused of beating a woman to death with a stick in Whitley County. Chris Lowe and Lori Maddy are both charged with murder and unlawful imprisonment in the death of Michelle Marlowe. Police say uh, in July of 2017, they found Marlowe's body after a trail of blood led them to it. They say it had been dragged inside a home. Lowe and Maddy's trial begins November 19th. A close call today in Floyd County. Take a look at this. Rescue crews needed to use a pontoon to save the victim of a crash. A car went over an embankment at Dewey Lake and ended up in the water. Luckily, state park officials were able to get to them in time to save the driver. While many of us celebrate Halloween, the Perry County Physical Court found a way to incorporate Breast Cancer Awareness Month into their festivities. Several different offices in the county courthouse decided to have a little fun and decorate their pumpkins to honor those who've been affected by breast cancer. All the offices in the courthouses came together to come up with all the different designs of pumpkins for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. After having people vote on Facebook for their favorite pumpkin, the Perry County Clerk's Office took the win. A little after four this afternoon, the Perry County Sheriff's Department was called to a two vehicle crash. This is the one we told you about at the beginning of the newscast. We now have some video from the scene. It took place on Kentucky 15 at the light at the turnoff to 451. One of the drivers was ejected from his vehicle during the crash. Both drivers were taken to the hospital with injuries. We do not know how serious the injuries are. Witnesses have talked to the Sheriff's Department about how the accident happened. One of the vehicles may have spun out and slid prior to impact, prior to the collision occurring, um, but it, it appears to be an, an unintended collision. So it sounds like weather may have played a role in this. The road was closed for over an hour, but it is now back open in both directions. Well, because